Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, please hear me, any door standing in front of you that has refused to open, I call upon the God of my covenant between now and December 31st, please hear me, in the name of Jesus, that grace is coming on someone, the grace for open doors, take that grace now, the grace for apacotes katepata, the grace for open doors, receive that grace right now, I speak to every closed door, Efata, be open, Efata, be open. Help them, please. I come in the name of he who holds the key of David. He says, I can open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open. I say to you again, I don't care how long that door has been locked. In the name of Jesus, we break that door open now. We break that door open now. We break the Pakoskatebata. We break that door open now. Hear me. There is a strange grace for visibility that is coming on people. Hear me. Do you know what it means to be visible? To be visible means to be acknowledged by the optical eyes. You can be there and yet not be visible. Visibility is the key for being living a rewarded life. Until people know you are there, they cannot place a demand on your gifting and grace. Haparika toskata, ebreketos ketevata, abakeros ya. Help them, please. I don't know what has covered your glory, but in the name of Jesus, may that grace for visibility rest on you now. Let it rest on you now. Hear me. Please help them. When baby Jesus was born, no physical man announced and said a baby is born. There was a grace on him that made the Magi, they left their distance and carried gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh, and they came to pay homage to a baby. Those guys were wise men. Why will they pay homage to a baby? So don't tell me I'm small. They paid homage to a baby. I say it again. Whatever has covered your glory, so that those to honor you cannot find you. I lift you by prophecy. Rise to a position of visibility. Rise to a position of visibility. Now hear me. I have taught you here that all blessings come from God through men to men. All blessings come from God through men to men. All troubles come from Satan through men to men. In any case, men are always the midwives of destiny, whether it is from God or from Satan. Hallelujah. There are many of you, God said yes since January, but the man who will say yes on earth has not been available. And there are forces that have pushed them away. Let me prophesy for your destiny helpers. Because you see, let me tell you, you are as powerful as those who support what you represent. The Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor, not in the multitude of your gift. Every man ordained by God to respond to you favorably this year and for whatever reason, maybe by demonic intrusion, their attention has been taken away from you. I speak to the north, the south and the east and the west. I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. To I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. Gravitate towards you.
Hallelujah. One of the mysterious spiritual currencies that buys a life of dignity and honor, including wealth, is this grace called favor. Favor is a grace. Look up, please. The understanding that favor is unmerited is not accurate. Favor is very merited. Favor is multidimensional. The dimension of favor that is not merited is the grace that administers salvation. But favor is merited. Proverbs 13, 15. It says, good understanding procured favor. Please give it to us. Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor, the violator of patterns is hard. How do you know favor is on your life? The real proof of favor is access to the heart of men. You know you are favored to the degree to which there are men to answer and attend to the matters of your life. Favor carries a tripartite expression. Please listen. Favor, genuine Bible favor carries a tripartite expression. Number one, unusual kindness. Number two, unusual acceptance. Number three, unusual access. Until this tripartite expression is captured in your life, it is not favor. And I've told you, if it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough, but not favor. Favor must happen repeatedly, regardless of the circumstances. Exodus 3, 21. And I will give these people favor. Pay attention, please in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go help me please ye shall not go empty Psalm 44 and verse 3 for those who have been trusting God for structural establishment here is the secret they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but your right hand and thine arm it says and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor towards them Esther 2.15, the B part, the little village girl Hadassah who was brought from Shushan, the Bible says, and Esther obtained favor in the eyes of how many? All. When favor comes on you, the only person who cannot bless you is a blind man, provided they have eyes to see. All them that looked upon her, verse 17, not even the king was spared. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. I know what favor is. Believe me with all humility. I can tell you. I may not know everything about it. But there is something I know about the favor of God. As we have received by grace in the name of Jesus upon someone right now someone who is tired karakos katikatia palakatos from the depth of my heart i pray for you as we have received freely may this grace called favor rest upon you now may this grace called favor rest upon you now may this grace called favor rest upon you now i speak to you Obtain unusual kindness from men. Unusual acceptance with men. Unusual access to the hearts and the resources of men. The favor of God is the number one reason people succeed. I have taught you again and again that in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. There are people who you cannot cast away. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are some enemies you can't cast away. You have to pray for a right of passage into their heart. Otherwise, that door will not be open. They are called gatekeepers. The covenant that binds them is beyond their attitude. Even in their fallen state, the throne of God still acknowledges them. You won't pray them away. You will pray for favor. For instance, there was no way to, bound, to bind and cast Pharaoh. If David was waiting, if, if Joseph was waiting to bind and cast Pharaoh to be prime minister, he would have waited forever. When God wants to lift Joseph, he will make Pharaoh have a dream that only Joseph can interpret.
and give him access to the palace the wine presser said i remember my wrong this day there was a young man who has been locked up my carelessness has added two years extra to his life and they said go and bring him and the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon not god there are men who can send for you and bring you out of certain realms it was the king that sent for joseph never to return to the prison again whoever needs to send for you in the name of jesus may the voice of favor call them may the voice of favor call them may the voice of favor call them whoever must send for your family in this period whoever must send for your ministry whoever must send for your value may favor compel them to call you hallelujah let me tell you the truth this world is a very selfish world it takes the favor of God for people to turn their hearts and their minds and their eyes away from the nuances and distractions and to focus on your destiny to lift you this world is not that kind I can tell you people are very selfish they are about and justifiably so everybody is focused on building their destiny whatever will make someone suspend attention over his destiny and invest his attention his credibility his resources on you must not be natural oh come oh come me man you will and run some captive Israel Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel, he has come to you, his Israel. Can I pray for speed? Listen, again I have taught you in this house that the unit of destiny is time. And one of the ways to abort a glorious destiny is to corrupt the potential for achieving much with respect to time your lifetime is a measure of your birth from the day you transit separated from your body and one of the strategies to abort great destinies is that Satan creates obstructions and impedances on your way so that you are not able to do much in time but there are two systems of advantage that have been deployed by the intelligence of God to remedy that constraint. Number one is called restoration. Number two is called speed. When these twofold forces work in the life of a man, you must gain time. Restoration brings back time. Speed accelerates you to do much within a short time. This is what I want to declare over your life. Speed is a very powerful system of advantage that much can be done within a short time in the name of jesus i call upon the god who called me the one by whom we have obtained apostles in the name of jesus christ by this apostolic and prophetic mantle i speak to someone may that grace for speed come upon you now may that grace for speed come upon you now receive that grace right now Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Hallelujah. Let me declare over you. If there is anybody here that the spirit of death is already tracking, that 20, help them please, that 2022 will be your last year and then something mysterious will happen. In the name of Jesus, I pray you shall not die. I say it to you prophetically, you shall not die. Not by the 
arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilences, nor the destruction that wastes in noonday. I speak to you that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side, but none shall come nigh you. With your eyes will you see and behold even the reward of the wicked. In the name of Jesus Christ. Job said the Lord will deliver you from six things. Yes, seven. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. Whoever has spoken against you and programmed a climate of death, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. I cancel that negative statement. In the name of Jesus. The final prayer I'll pray for you. Please be patient. And then, since he's here, the prophet of God, Pastor Emos Fenwa, I would just plead with him to just come, even if it's just in a minute, to make a prophetic declaration over you. And I've seen God honor the words upon his mouth. And I know what God can do when our hearts are open to receive. Hallelujah. And then we'll wrap up with our end of year sacrifice. And that will be it. I want to pray concerning your finances. Please look up. I don't believe in poverty. It's already clear. There is no point hiding or playing around it. There's, there's nothing, nothing to explain about it at all. I'm not talking of fanatism and this obsession for money. We are kingdom people driven by purpose and intelligence. So when we talk about things like this, please, this is not an attempt to foil lust in the heart of one who is not serious with God. We're, we're talking about the king. That's why I started by telling you that our ultimate motivation is to see Jesus revealed. I have taught you here that money has three major assignments. Number one, for your comfort. God blesses us so that we can live a comfortable life. Number two, God blesses us so that we can provide financial resources for kingdom advance. Number three, God blesses us so that he can give us an opportunity to be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. Money becomes a tool and evidence to that blessing to help us. And financially speaking, money has two assignments. Number one, efficiency. Number two, time redemption. That's it. The assignment of money in the life of any believer is to help you be efficient Efficiency is a product of gaining time. It's a dominion system. Number two, time redemption. It affords you the opportunity to do much within time and then to be efficient while you do so. So one of the ways to waste your time is to keep you limited financially. This finance thing has limited a lot of people, especially because of the realities that have happened across the economy of nations. I have taught you here that there are many dimensions of wealth and I am not one of those preachers that downplay the place of value, intelligence, contribution. I have taught you extensively. There is an economic system to the kingdom. There is a science to wealth. Wealth is not arbitrary. It's, it's, it's a response to value. There are intelligent people here, business people, captains of industry, and I'm not here as a man of God to downplay your pedigree, but I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. In the Bible, every time there was an economic problem, it was not economists that were called. It was the prophet that had to answer. Why is there an economic problem? And the prophet said, by this time, tomorrow. The prophetic dimension to wealth is called sovereign wealth. This is not wealth by value. This is wealth by the finger of God. It, it happens to men, but as instructed by God. When, that, when the prophetic word comes, let me tell you what happens. The spirit of wisdom follows that prophetic word and starts looking for human actors that must make that word not look like a lie. So there were four lepers who sat down and they did not even know what started moving them. They said, why do we sit down here? That courage was not normal. It was the product of the spirit of wisdom responding to the prophecy of Elijah. Elisha in Samaria. One person sent by God can schedule a season in your life that brings you to permanent rest. Are you ready to receive? And by a prophet, he says, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, no matter how blessed you are, I have taught you here that the standard of being financially blessed is that you can give so much to the kingdom without it affecting your overall financial health. 
if you have not gotten to that state it means you must open your heart for more in the name of Jesus Christ by the privilege of grace and apostleship and by the power of the prophetic I speak over someone may that grace that makes rich may that grace that can empower a man rolling away financial shame from lives and families receive that grace right now receive that grace right now upon the works of your hands receive it upon your mind receive it in the name of Jesus Christ And when Saul met with prophet Samuel, Samuel told him, number one, the donkey you have been looking for has been found. Prophecy brings restoration. Number two, as you return, you will find three men holding two loaf of bread. They will salute you and give you. That is honor and favor. Number three, you will come to the garrison of the Philistines and that the hand of the Lord will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy. Truly, the prophetic can bring prosperity. It can be, not, it can be abused, but within the boundary of scripture and the boundary of doctrine for the believer, it can work wonders. I say it again, the man to surprise you by God, I send them to you prophetically. The man raised by God to be his system of help towards your life and finances, to bail you out from shame and reproach, receive of their ministry right now. Hallelujah. Please let's invite Pastor Emos Fenwa for a minute or two. Be ready to receive. Open up your heart to receive as he speaks and then we'll be ready with our sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 65 verse 11, Thou crowned the year with thy goodness and thy backdrop fatness. I speak as the year is running to an end. Your life shall be crowned with goodness. Goodness over your health over your ministry, over your marriage, everywhere you go as from now, you are favored. The Lord protects you for the rest of the year. Your life is preserved. As you leave this meeting today, good news everywhere. Within 24 hours, good news everywhere. Text message of good news. Email of good news. Your doors are open. Your doors are open. Your doors are open. Receive it. Testimony in your mouth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Let's appreciate him. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting, use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.